welcome students welcome to legacy as academy in this particular video we are going to discuss about a geographical concept that is with regards to the tectonic landform so as far as the tectonic landforms are concerned we are going to discuss the types of tectonic landforms the major types of tectonic landforms along with the examples so it becomes more clear that where and how we see the development of such kind of tectonic landforms so first of all as far as the landforms on the earth's surface are concerned there are a number of different ways in which we can classify it however the one major way of categorizing landform is like for example depositional landforms that means such landforms that develop due to depositional work of the sediments that is brought by the rivers winds or the glaciers the other way of classifying landform is erosional landforms such landforms that are carved out by the agents of erosion again such as wind water and air and the landforms that are made by the movement of the earth's crust that is we can say where the earth's crust or the earth's plates are moving the landform that forms due to such process can be categorized as a tectonic land so in this particular video we are going to discuss an overview of the most common tectonic landforms that we find across the earth so the first landform that we are going to discuss in this series is what we can refer as an escarpment so what is an escarpment an escarpment in a very simple term can be defined as a long large brick in the land or the land surface this long large brick basically separates the higher region and the lower region of the country or the state and this escarpment is something that is observed around the normal fault the example of escarpments are great rift valley that we find along in the african continent as well as abertry that is in the united states of america now let us try to understand this with a diagram so first of all as we have discussed escarpment develops in the area where we have normal fault so let us try to understand what is a normal fault now fault is something that can be defined as a crack or a break in the rock so what is a normal fault normal fault is that kind of fault where the displacement of the earth's part or displacement of the lithospheric region happens in the downward direction because the gravitational force is pulling everything in the downward direction the movement of the lithospheric plate or the part of the plate in the downward direction is considered as a normal movement and that is why it is called as normal fault this particular diagram as you see on your screen represents the normal fault for example the central part of this particular lithospheric slab or the plate is getting displaced in the downward direction now what is the result of this displacement as the central region of this particular area gets displaced what happens is that the surrounding regions becomes automatically uplifted so this is something that we can call as scar escarpment and as we can see this is the actual picture of this abert rim this is the abert rim and as you can see on this area we have the uplifted landmass now why this landmass has become uplifted because this particular area the central part has become displaced in the downward direction so that is why escarpment fault that is how we can say escarpment forms on the land surface now not only uh, this escarpment is very high for example the abert rim is almost 700 meter high many times escarpment develop not in a single uh, not as a single uh, landform but it develops in hundreds of landforms and this particular escarpment is example of basin and range topography where hundreds of ranges each flanked by basins many of which contain dry lake bed or playas develop when there is a large scale movement over a wide area uh, that takes place on the earth surface largely because of development of normal fault as far as india is concerned we also have something that is called as a great escarpment this great escarpment refers to western ghat escarpment now if you look at this particular picture what we can see is we have the uplifted landmass everywhere and somewhere between this uplifted landmass we has a depressed area so the escarpment of western ghat has also formed in similar manner because it is believed that in earlier time we also used to have landmass here but due to tectonic disturbances due to plate disturbances the central part of this landmass went below there is a development of normal fault and later on this western part of the landmass got submerged below the ocean leaving only the western ghat as a remnant of this particular topographical development so the western ghat india is a very good example of the scar so that is about the first type of tectonic landform now let us try to understand the second type of tectonic landform that is called as fault scar so fault scar again in simple terms can be defined as motion on a fault that may raise one side above the other 
so escarpment develops because the central part of a region gets displaced toward the downward direction on the other hand fault scarp develops when there is a movement of one part of land mass against the other land this is basically a short lived feature as far as the geological terms are concerned however fault scarps are considered as a purest tectonic landforms for example we have mountain ranges that have developed over a different different regions of the earth that has developed over millennia that is example of fault scarp so if you look at this particular diagram this we can see that what basically is happening is we have a part of land mass that is rather than moving in the downward direction it is being thrown in the upward direction so as this land mass is thrown in the upward direction automatically its height will rise as compared to the land masses toward it is toward its east so due to this this region is called as hanging wall this is the fault scar this is the up thrown wall block and this is the down thrown block now if you look at the actual photo of the fault scar the sierra nevada mountain ranges that are situated in the california are example of fault scar as you can see in the background we have this rising sierra nevada ranges while in the front we have a depressed area that it can be considered as a valley and this is the mountain but this has developed due to the upward movement of the areas that has led to development of sierra sierra nevada mountain ranges that is all about the fault scar again to make it very clear the escarpment falls when the central part of land mass goes and displaces in the downward direction while the fault scarp forms when the part of land mass is thrown or moved in the upward directions both happens due to the forces that is emanating or originating from below the earth and we can say these are the both of these landforms are result of a force that can be called as a endogenic forces apart from that india also we have development of certain fault scarps and most of these fault scarps are developed in the kutch region of gujarat where some sort of tectonic disturbance is being observed for example as you can see the kutch mainland fault scar kartrol hill fault scar as well as vigodi fault scars are three most notable fault scars in the kutch region of gujarat due to such kind of movement now the third landforms that we have discussed the tectonic landforms that we have discussed is something that is referred as pressure ridge so pressure ridge forms where lateral motions on a curving fault force rocks into a smaller space let us try to understand this with a more simple example this pressure ridges are basically developing in areas which are having transform plate interactions now if you have studied geomorphology you might be aware about we have three major types of plate interaction convergence divergence and transform plate interaction so transform plate interaction refer to such kind of plate interaction where two plates are neither coming toward nor moving away from each other but are simply sliding past each other along a common boundary so for example we can represent the movement of transform plate interaction as such where we have plate 1 might be moving in this direction while plate 2 might be moving in this direction along this common boundary so when lateral motions take place around a curving fault around this transform plate interaction let us try to understand what this curving plot curving fault means many times when you talk about this particular boundary area this boundary is not a straight line boundary but it's curving here and there like such and that is why when this curving fault is displaced when the curving fault basically pushes against the another curving fault uh, another curving fault the rocks that are present in this area are basically squeezed into a smaller space the out the result of this squeezing is that there is a development of bulge on one side of the fault which is carried against a bulge on the other side of the fault due to this the excess material that is present on the bulge or between the bulge is pushed in the upward direction and this is what we call as pressure ridge the best example of pressure ridge can be observed around the san andreas fault because this is the fault along which the california plate and the north american plate are having a transform kind of plate interaction to be more precise continental continental transform plate interaction if you look at the diagram here we can see this is one plate and this is another plate now what happens as these two plates move linearly as well as some part of plate move laterally as well due to this the central part of this region will get compressed and will push material will be pushed in the upward direction as we can see this is actual photograph here this side we have the first plate this side we have the second plate and when these two plates are moving like this in that case the excess material is being pushed and the rising kind of landmass that is called as pressure ridge is being formed 
as clear from the name itself it is a ridge ridge is a uplifted landmass that is developing due to the pressure exerted by both sides on this particular area now pressure ridges are something that also we see in the glacial landforms or the glaciated area for example we have two different ice sheets that might be moving toward each other and due to such movement when one part of when one ice sheet is exerting pressure on the other ice sheet the material that is present here may may might get uplifted and the excess material excess ice may may get squeezed in the upward direction thus a pressure ridge like formation also is observed in the glaciated areas the next important or the major landforms associated with tectonic plate disturbance is something that you can refer as sag basin now sag basin is something that is quite opposite to the pressure ridges pressure ridges develop when the two convex or convexing landforms convection convex shape landforms are pushing against each other at the same time when there is a strike slip fault that means transcurrent fault at the place where we have transform plate interaction at the same place when two concave areas come in contact with each other what happens is when a concavity on one side of the fault is carried against another on the other side the ground between them will shack obviously for example if we have a convex shape of land masses when these two land masses will interact they will push this particular central area and that will lead to development of pressure ridge on the other hand if we have two convex shape landforms concave shape landforms when they are coming toward each other in that case there will be a kind of depression that will develop in between and that is something that is referred as sag basin main time water gets accumulated in the sag basin that lead to development of sag lake or sag pond the best example of sag basin is what we can call as san francisco bay again located around the san andreas fault so as you can see this from this particular diagram this is the one plate this is the second plate and due to this what is happening the concave part of both plates are interacting with each other due to this the central part or the immediate area immediate area between both plates have become sagged in nature has become depressed in nature and as you can see in around the san andreas fault in this sag basin we have accumulation of water that has led to development of a sea or a small lake that is referred as salton sea next in the series of tectonic landform is the rift valley now rift valley is the most important landforms that develop due to tectonic plate disturbance so basically rift valley develops in those areas where the whole lithosphere is basically being pulled apart due to the opposite flow of convection current below it due to this a long deep basin between two long highland belts develop and the best example of rift valley can be seen in the africa's great rift valley as you can see we have two rift valleys one is the east african rift valley going all the way from red sea to the east and south and other we have the west african rift valley that is also developing in the eastern part of africa so basically what we can say is happening that we have a single african plate however below this african plate convection current is being moving in two different direction and due to this opposite movement of convection current what happens the whole lithospheric plate whole lithospheric crust is being pulled apart in opposite direction that led to development of a depression or valley like feature in between the other example of rift valley is in the usa where it is known as rio grande rift valley where rio grande river is flowing through the example of rift valley we can see the structure of rift valley we can understand from this particular diagram where we can see that we have a single lithospheric slab and the convection current is moving in opposite direction and due to this we have a development of a valley like structure while the highland areas are being pulled apart continuously away from each other and this is the actual photograph of the african rift valley where you can see we have the highland areas uplifted areas on both the side and in between we have a valley through which rivers can flow as well as we have development of several major lakes in africa as well in this particular depression the last landform which we have to understand that is example of tectonic landform is something that is called as shutter ridge shutter is also developed in the areas where we have transform plate interaction or where we have development of what we can call as strike slip fault a strike slip fault develops around those regions where two plates are moving along common boundary not toward each other not away from each other so in that case the fault that develops it carries high ground on one side past low ground on another for example if we have two plates plate 1 and plate 2 and when they are moving against each other on one plate we can have highlands such as ridges or hills on the other hand 
in the plate 2 we can have valleys so when the hills of plate 1 moves against the valleys of plate 2 in that case what happens we have development of landform that we can call as shutter ridge so the motion of the barrier is like the shutter of an old fashioned camera and that is how the name has been derived now when the hill or the uplifted part of one plate is moving against the uh, down thrusted part or valley of the other plate in that kind of movement any stream that is flowing through these valleys might get blocked and once these stream get blocked that can lead to development of a temporary lake and this is what exactly we see around the san andreas fault where the california plate is moving against the north american plate the stream has been blocked and a temporary lake known by the name of lake temescal has developed now let us try to understand this on a diagram so as you can see this is plate 1 and this is the uplifted part of plate 1 this is plate 2 and this as we can see it is a kind of valley or depressed part of plate 2 and plate 1 is moving against plate 2 that means we can say that the hill of plate 1 or the uplifted part of plate 1 is moving against the depressed part of plate 2 and due to this the stream that is flowing around this area may get blocked and as you can see this is the actual lake temescal where we have plate due to the plate movement transform plate interaction the blocking of the stream has given rise to development of a temporary lake so these are the major landforms i hope you understood as far as uh, the landforms related with tectonic movement is concerned that is all for this particular video if you like it please like share and subscribe that is all thank you very much